In parts one and two of this tutorial, we built a workflow in K2 Studio to manage temporary access requests for an organization. In part four, we will create a report against this data by combining the workflow reporting data with the temporary access request smart object data. In effect, we are going to combine the workflow history data with business data to build a report that is relevant to our users. In this case, we want to create a view of temporary access requests that anyone in the organization can review at any time, along with the workflow status and a link to the workflow. This is not only a security measure that makes it easier to see who is allowed to access the premises, but it also helps make it easier to track down a workflow if it is stuck or identify a failed workflow. To achieve this, we will build a composite smart object in K2 Studio. We will build a view against that smart object, then we will add the view to our temporary access request form. From a technical perspective, what this tutorial illustrates is how to build an advanced composite smart object that combines data from different systems so that you can create logical business entities that present relevant information to users without forcing them to look in different locations for the information they need. Beginning with step 14, we will be using K2 Studio to create a new smart object in our existing K2 Studio project. We will then configure this new smart object as a composite smart object that retrieves and combines data from two different systems. K2 Studio gives us the ability for this part of the tutorial to set up smart objects in a couple different ways. If necessary, you may need to go back and open up K2 Studio in your environment, then get into the project that we created in part one of this tutorial. I need to do that here, so I'll go down into the Start button menu, select All Programs, go into K2 Black Pearl, and here we have the K2 Studio shortcut. From here, locate that project and open it up. And then we can expand the Solution Explorer. Right click on the Temporary Access Application folder and select Add Item, New Project Item. On the Templates window, let's select K2 Smart Object this time. Give the smart object a name of Temporary Access Request Composite Smart Object. Then when you're ready, click Create. As this runs, you may need to wait for the new smart object design screen to appear. When you create an advanced smart object in K2 Studio, K2 will automatically add in default methods like create, save, delete, etc. Since we only need one list type method for this particular example, we can remove the default methods up in the ribbon bar at the top, click on Remove All to remove all the methods from the smart object at this point. You can click OK on the warning message that appears. Next, let's go and click Add in the Methods ribbon menu grouping to get moving on a new composite list style method for the smart object. Now on the Wizard Welcome screen, make sure to select the Advanced Mode checkbox, then click Next. We are going to be selecting advanced mode here because we want to combine results from two different systems into one method. On this screen, let's configure the method details as follows. For name, call it get list. For description, enter in get list of workflows and requests. For the type, select list. We are going to be returning just a list of records for this method. The transaction type can be set to continue. Basically, continue means that if one of the systems that returns the data returns an error, K2 will continue on calling the other system regardless of that error. When you're ready, you can click Next. We won't need to add any method parameters, so click Next again to skip over the Configure Method Parameter screen. On the Service Object Method screen, let's click Add to add in a new method. Use the ellipses button here to open up the context browser and browse for the following in the environment tab area. Open up service object servers, then open up service object server, go into smart box service, open up temporary access request smart object, select get list. When you've done that, you can click the Add button to put it into the Service Object Method text box. Now let's click on the Create All button to create the properties for the smart object that will be bound to the properties of the service object. 
we want to return all the properties from this service as properties of the new smart object. And at the same time, this helps us out by clicking create all, which automatically creates the fields in the smart object. This is so we don't have to set them up one by one manually. When you've done that, you can click OK. To quickly recap, we have just added the first smart object method to our composite smart object. Remember that smart objects are associated with service objects, and the neat thing about them is you can combine multiple service objects to make up a composite smart object. So far, we have added the method getList that returns all of the temporary access request records that are stored in the K2 SmartBox database, and we configure the mapping so that all of the properties stored in this database will be exposed as properties in the composite smart object. Next, we will add the second service object method to our composite smart object, specifically a method from the Workflow Solutions reporting service. On the service object method screen, click the Add button again. This is because we want to add a second service method to call into our composite smart object. This time, use the context browser to browse for the following service object method and drag it into the service object method text box. It's going to be located in the environment tab again, down in the service objects groupings, under the workflow reporting service. In here, open up K2 Learning, Temporary Access Application, go into Temporary Access Application Workflow, then go into the K2 Learning Temporary Access Application grouping again, and under here, select its list method called List Process Instances. Now, do you recall back when you selected the Create Workflow Reporting Smart Objects option when deploying the workflow? When we did this, this is what created this reporting service method for us. For the second service method, instead of auto-generating all properties, we only want specific properties returned from this service. Locate and select the start date property here, and click the Assign button. Next, on the Map Service Property screen, click the Create button, and then on the pop-up window, we can set the property name of this new property to Workflow Start Date. Then click OK when you're done. Click OK again to close the Map Service Property screen, and you should see that the start date has been mapped to a new property called Workflow Start Date. Let's go ahead and repeat the same process to assign and create properties for each of the following service properties. And you may be asking, we want to identify which properties come from the Workflow service, which is why we are renaming these properties to include the word Workflow in the properties name. For the sake of time, I'm going to pause the video here, but go ahead and add in finish date, set it to workflow complete date, then add status and set it to workflow status. For view flow, we'll add that in and set it to workflow view flow. And for the record ID, add that and call it workflow record ID. When you're done, we'll come back and take a look at what it should look like. Okay, when you're done with that, your add service object method wizard screen should look like mine here on the screen. It has a mix of properties from multiple service instances available now. When you're ready, you can click OK to close the add service object method screen. Just as another recap, we added the second service object method that is going to make up our composite smart object. In this case, we only wanted to return a few select properties from the workflow reporting service and not all of them and we renamed each of these properties so that it is obvious that they came from the workflow service. And the important thing here is we included the record ID property from the workflow. This will be the common value that will allow us to join the data returned by the workflow reporting service over to the temporary access requests record data that was returned by the SmartBox service. Remember that when we first set up the workflow, we configured it so that the form would create the record then get the record ID and save the record ID into the workflow. Doing this allows us to easily join the workflow reporting data with the business data. Next, we need to tell the composite smart object to use a common property that will join the data from the two services. This is going to be the record ID field. Click next to go to the setup service method link screen. When you get in here, click the add button. In the Add Service Method Link screen, select SmartBox Service from the top drop-down menu. 
and then select Workflow Reporting Service from the bottom drop-down menu. Here in the middle, you can select the option to return matching values in both objects. In the list of properties, let's locate and select the Temporary Access Request Smart Object, grab the ID property, and click Assign. In the Bind Service Property ID 2 dialog box, you can select Record ID from the drop-down list, then click OK. Click OK again to close the Add Service Method link screen. We have now added the two service methods that return the data we need. We selected which properties from those methods we want in our composite smart object, and then we told K2 how to join the data from the two services to one another with a common property, which was the record ID field. Click Next on the Setup Service Method Links screen, and click Finish to complete the wizard. When you've done that, make sure to save your work in K2 Studio. In this step, we created a composite smart object that combines data returned by the SmartBox service which was the temporary access request records with data returned by the workflow reporting service, that being all of the workflow instances of the temporary access request workflow. We selected which properties from each of these services we wanted to include in our smart object, and then we told K2 which common property it should use to join the two result sets to each other, that being the record ID. If you are familiar with database SQL language, it is almost the same thing as a join statement. You basically have to tell the system which property to join the two results together with. Next, we will move on and deploy this new smart object. In step 15, we will deploy the new composite smart object from K2 Studio, then we will use the smart object tester utility provided by K2 to test it. In this step, we need to deploy the new smart object to our K2 server, but we do not need to deploy the workflow because nothing has changed in the workflow. Let's set this up by opening up the Solution Explorer in K2 Studio, and then right-click the Temporary Access Request Workflow. From here, you can select the Exclude option. When you get that set, you can deploy the solution like you did before by clicking on the Deploy button in the ribbon menu up here at the top. Let's move through the deployment wizard and finish it out. Because we excluded the workflow from the deployment this time, the deployment process should go through a little quicker. You can pause the video here, however, if it is taking a bit longer in your environment. Okay, let's save our work. And we can close K2 Studio. It's always a good idea to test smart objects before you start using them in forms and workflows. To do this, you can use the Smart Object Tester utility. To open up this utility, we need to go and open up Windows Explorer from the Start Menu Run box. Enter in the word Explorer here. You can select File Explorer from the search results and then go to the C drive. Once you get in here, go into Program Files x86, K2 Black Pearl, go into the bin directory, and you can select the Smart Object Server Tester Utility executable file here. We do this because K2 doesn't, by default, give us a shortcut on our desktops. Now feel free to add a shortcut if you'd like, if you think you're going to need to come back to this. When the Smart Object Service Tester Utility opens up, we need to expand the Smart Object Service Tree and locate this new Smart Object. Open up Smart Object Explorer, then go into K2 Learning, open up the Temporary Access Application category, and then select the Temporary Access Request Composite Smart Object, right-click on it, and select Execute Smart Object. When this window opens up, click the Execute button to call the GetList method. It should be set to that method by default. When it runs, you should see results returned, one for each temporary access request that we entered while testing the workflow, if you recall. This looks pretty good here. We should also see that the data includes workflow data. Notice the workflow start date and all the properties that we added earlier. This confirms that our composite smart object works as expected. Now we can use this data in forms and workflows. You can close the smart object tester utility when you're ready. In this step, we basically deployed the new smart object to our K2 environment. Remember, when you build artifacts with K2 Studio, you must always deploy those items to the K2 server. You can use the Exclude option as well to selectively include and exclude items from the deployment task. When you do this, it can help speed up your deployment process. 
In this step, we also learned how to use the smart object tester utility to test our new composite smart object by executing the getList method. In our final step for this tutorial, being step 16, this will have us create a new smart form view that will display the data returned by the composite smart object we just deployed. We will also add it to the temporary access request smart form to help users easily see all access requests. For this step, we will need to get into K2 Designer to edit the smart form. If you're in your own environment, you may need to contact your K2 administrator for the URL to K2 Designer, that is, if you don't have a shortcut for it already. Within the K2 Virtual Machine, you can go down into the Start button menu, open up All Programs, go to K2 Black Pearl, K2 Smart Forms, and select K2 Designer. When this opens up, you can drill down into the Temporary Access Application folder under All Items, then open up K2 Learning, and you should see the new composite smart object sitting there in the folder. Click once on the smart object to select it, and then select the Design a New View option over here on the right. When the welcome page for this wizard opens up, click Next on this page to move through to the next one. And at this point, let's configure this view as follows. For the name, enter in Temporary Access Request List View. The category option you can leave as the default value. For view type, select list view if it isn't set already. Also with the data source, you can leave it set to the default value. It should automatically be set to the composite smart object since we started this wizard off of that smart object. For the list method, let's select get list. For the option that says call this method when the form loads, put a check in there if it isn't checked already. Click Next, then you can click the Create Labels and Controls link. In this dialog box that pops up, select the following properties, Full Name, Company, Start Date and End Date, Status, Requester, Workflow Status, and the Workflow Viewflow field. You can leave the remaining options on the screen unchanged and click OK. For this next task, we will not be formatting this view, so click Next twice to move to the Rules screen. On the Rules screen, we will be adding a basic rule to this view so that when a user double clicks a row, the Viewflow report will automatically open up. Click on the Add Rule button here. For the rule event, select when the view executes a method over here in the events tab on the left. That will add it to the rules pane over here on the right. For the method, select list item double click. Now let's go back over and select the actions tab on the lower left of this wizard. You can then select the navigate to a URL action option. and we can click the Configure link to set up the action. Let's drag the Workflow Viewflow property into the Base URL text box. You can find it in the Temporary Access Request Composite Smart Object under the Context Browser here on the right. It's inside the Temporary Access Request List View if you drill down into it. Okay, also let's select the New Window or Tab option for the Open in List box here. You can click OK to complete the Action Configuration screen. Then click OK again to close the Rule Configuration screen. We're done setting up this view, so you can click Finish to complete the wizard. Before we add it to the form, let's test this new view. Click on the Runtime URL link in the View's Properties area to open up the view for testing. You should see the temporary access requests that you entered in earlier for testing, and if you double-click a row, the Viewflow report for that request should open up. Next, we will go and add this view to the Temporary Access Request form so that users can easily see what temporary access requests were entered and add a new one if they need to. Locate the Temporary Access Request form, right-click on it, and select Checkout. 
right click the temporary access request form under the application category over here on the left and select edit. We can skip to the layout screen, then click the access request report tab. The access request report tab was added previously as part of the project package that you deployed. If you'd like more information on how to do tabs, you can look up the tutorials on SmartForms for instructions on how to do this. From the category list, drag and drop the temporary access request list view into the blank access requests report tab as shown here on my screen. Now we can click finish to complete the form changes. Right click the temporary access request form and select check in. Click OK on the warning message that appears. Let's open the temporary access request form by selecting it if it isn't already. Then use the runtime URL from the properties window after you select it. You could also open it by using the browser bookmark favorite if you happen to save it as a favorite earlier on in the tutorial. Click the access requests report tab and you should see all the access requests listed along with the workflow status column. Let's double click on any row to open the ViewFlow report for that workflow instance just to test it out, and that looks pretty good. For review in this step, we created a view that uses the data returned by our composite smart object along with a rule that will open the ViewFlow report if a row is double clicked. We then added that view to our application form so that users can easily see the temporary access requests and open the ViewFlow report if they need to see more detail about that workflow. If everything works as expected, congratulations! You've completed the temporary access application tutorial series and now have an application with basic function that could be put to use in your organization. By running through this tutorial, we were able to get our hands dirty with the K2 package and deployment utility to deploy K2 application elements across different environments. We used K2 Studio to expand that application with a workflow and wired that workflow into an existing smart form. The design of that workflow took on some of the basics for building a K2 process out, but it also added in some more complex capabilities like escalation, parallel paths, loopback lines, and advanced line rules to handle multiple outcomes based on user actions and data entered into a form. By tying data from the application directly to K2 workflow historical data, we were able to enhance the capabilities of the application's reporting mechanism to provide timely information for security purposes and management review. Again, we hope you've enjoyed working through this tutorial as it was meant to give you a better understanding of the tools involved with building out a K2 application using K2 Studio.